Graham McQueen received his PhD in comparative religion from, the Harvard, from Harvard University and taught in the religious studies department of McMaster University for 30 years. A textual scholar whose publications on ancient Pali and Sanskrit literature include a critical study of the Svananyapula Sutra, he is also a noted figure within the peace movement. In 1989, he helped found McMaster's Center for Peace Studies. He served as director of the center from 1989 to 1996, and as co-director of peace building programs in Sri Lanka, Gaza, Croatia, and Afghanistan. Among them, the Health of Children in War Zones project, which was active in three war zones, and the Media and Peace Education project in Afghanistan. His publications in this field include two books, as well as articles in such journals as The Lancet, the British Medical Journal, Peace and Change, and Medical Crossfire. Professor McQueen has more recently become a recognized authority on aspects of the evidence relating to 9-11, applying the careful scholarship of his textual work to analyses of the witness testimony related to the destruction of the World Trade Center, the physics of the North Tower collapse, the seismic evidence, and the anthrax attacks. Professor McQueen's evidence this morning will be on the subject of eyewitness evidence of explosions in the Twin Towers, compilation of eyewitness testimony. Graham McQueen. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Good. That's okay. I put it down. <clears throat> well, good morning, and uh, thank you for that very kind introduction, Michael. As you know, some of us think that the three buildings at the World Trade Center, buildings one, two, and three, were brought down through a process of controlled demolition. So the question naturally arises, if that's the case, a seemingly outlandish thing, if that's the case, surely somebody on the scene would have noticed something, especially if this is, in any sense, a standard controlled demolition which uses explosives. Surely somebody would have heard them, or seen them, or felt them. And the answer, of course, is they did. And my job today is to give a brief overview of some of the eyewitness statements. I say some because my collection is far from comprehensive, but it should give you a pretty good taste of what this literature, as well as some of the video footage, looks like. A couple of the video clips I'm using uh, were, seen, were shown yesterday by Richard Gage, but I think it's worth looking at them again. I'm noted for my slightly plodding, slow way of going through all this material, and uh, I, think, I think that that, uh, that kind of attention is sometimes called for. Now, some, some people would like to uh, cut off this inquiry at the root by suggesting that eyewitness statements are uh, irrelevant. The usual phrase is, eyewitness testimony is notoriously unreliable that it's soft evidence, it's vulnerable evidence, it can be dismissed. I'm not going to spend too long on this objection because I think it's extraordinarily weak. I think it finds no support from the careful, careful social scientific study of eyewitness evidence, which has gone on for decades, nor does it find support from the use of eyewitness testimony in the legal framework. 
Moreover, one of the gold standards on the investigation of explosions as well as fires, the National Fire Prevention Association handbook says very clearly, the investigator should take into consideration all the available information, including witness statements. Not a surprising uh, position, but important nonetheless. I also want to point out that the government accounts, 9-11 Commission report and the NIST report, do not take issue with my general position. They agree that eyewitness testimony is important. In fact, the 9-11 Commission report would fall apart entirely without this form of evidence. And NIST even acknowledges that eyewitness testimony is important in determining how the buildings came down. Now, they don't, they don't follow up on that principle, but they, the pos position is clear, and it's not any different from mine at the theoretical level. So there's no disagreement. We can proceed with our investigation. What I want to do is make, uh, oh, before I make my three points today, it might be sensible to give you a little bit of autobiographical stuff. I got into this issue in 2006 after reading an excellent article by David Ray Griffin, Explosive Testimony. He and researchers working with him had discovered the oral histories of the New York firefighters, which had been released in 2000, late 2005 after uh, the New York Times threatened the city of New York with a court case. And these comprised somewhere between 10 and 12,000 pages of eyewitness statements from members of the Fire Department of New York, the FDNY. And, said Dr. Griffin, there are many uh, accounts of explosions around the time the buildings came down. Now, the official story has no room for such explosions, so this was interesting. I was in the lucky position of being able to put aside all my other work for some months and read through all of that material. And it's, it's something that a textual scholar doesn't get a chance to do very often, to take texts which almost no one in the world has read through, probably no more than the number of fingers on my hand, had read through all that material at that time, looking for a specific thing. And as a result of that study, I published an article in the Journal of 9-11 Studies, which was a fairly new journal at the time, in which I not only described, but gave these statements of 118 members of the FDNY. I myself was surprised by the number of eyewitnesses that talked about explosions. Now, what I'm going to do today builds on that earlier work. I've been doing other kinds of research in the meantime, but it, I will try and explain some of the uh, issues that arise in the study of this material, and my list today will be somewhat expanded, so it won't be simply a regurgitation of that uh, study. Three points I want to make today. First, the conviction that the towers came down because of explosions as opposed to structural failure, was common in Nyla. And this is my typical very cautious statement. I mean, it was common is an understatement. It's all over the place in that. Secondly, there is substantial eyewitness evidence supporting this conviction. And third, this eyewitness evidence has been ignored or suppressed by the 9-11 Commission and the National Institute of Standards and Technology. We begin then with the conviction that the towers came down because of explosions was common. Now, why is this even important? 